any hair on the forks. Yeah. They're a little squishy. <laughs> <laughs> That's supposed to be wet, wet. Well, no. I don't know. I only use a couple at a time. This is actually probably too many. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Close your eyes, bring your awareness into your heart center. And ask the smile in your heart to find you. As it does, maybe spread that smile across your face for a moment. And notice that all of the cells in your body are glowing with light. Continue to breathe and into that heart center and feel it expanding. Feel that light moving, going stronger. Picture roots of light that go downward from your heart and out the base of your spine and through the soles of your feet. Visualize these roots growing into the earth, wrapping around crystals, minerals, metals, weaving through the roots of many other plants and trees. Visualize them going deeper, traveling through the lava underground, the water underground, deeper and deeper the layers of fossils and fossil fuel, deeper and deeper, the molten core of the planet and the solid core of the planet, and the massive power of the earth we're living on. At its core, it has its own heart. It's always beating. Feel that heartbeat of the earth. Feel it synchronize with your own heartbeat. Feel the vibration coming from that deep core of the planet. It moves it through all of these layers. It sends a wave of energy up and into your body. Use your roots to pull that energy in. It can be a deep red brown energy coming in from the earth. Feel it coming up through your feet and your legs your sit bones and the base of your spine, up through your abdomen and torso, your chest and arms, traveling all the way up to the top of your head. Picture a pillar of light that opens and spreads around your body. See that energy going through the top of your head and beyond. See this pillar of light go all the way down to the center of the earth and all the way up to the center of the galaxy. Start to follow this pillar of light out and beyond your head. Visualize going outside of your body from above, and floating above the space into the Earth's atmosphere, going up to the moon and beyond, up to the sun, in this powerful center that gives all of us here life. From the sun, see a net of energy that travels outward. Follow it through many stars connected to this invisible web of light to our sun. These stars like 
Alcyon and the Pleiades or Sirius, Arcturus, you know, a star personal to you, you can picture that one. Call in that connection. Not to see many stars out beyond. So now even beyond the stars, to the galactic center, the heart of this galaxy. Seeing a brilliant cluster of stars surrounding a supermassive black hole. We appear as dark. Because you really connect with it, notice it radiates light. Travel all the way through that giant black hole. See an incredibly small pinpoint of light at its center. Imagine going through that pinpoint like a wormhole. It opens into an endless field of light. The light that connects all galaxies, all universes. Available to all. Imagine that light pouring from the galactic center through all of these stars and through our own sun into your crown like a shower or a waterfall. Feel your crown chakra opening to fit more of this energy in. Feel this wave descending into your body, moving then slowly down to your head back of your neck and face. Through your neck. And throat. Into your chest, moving through your arms. Feel it going down into your torso. And belly. All the way down to your toes. Allowing the cosmic energy and the earth energy to blend and meld together. Feeling now your body connected to all realms. Direct your awareness back to your heart where you can feel the earth and the cosmos meet and merge. Continue to listen from this place and receive from this place. Knowing that beyond the words is a transmission of frequency and energy. And also tune into, in this space, a transmission of energy from your own guides, supporting your deepening. So I will turn it over and let you enjoy the transmission. Hello, hello, and we say a good day to you at this moment of your time. We are the Pleiadian Council, and we speak on behalf of a galactic line of many interstellar beings who are supporting your world in this process that some of you call ascension. We simply call it your 
evolution. We thank you for allowing this transmission to take place and for coming to meet us today. It is a gift that you extend to us as well for through experiencing your world and receiving energy through the reflections you offer us, we in turn expand and connect deeper with Source in the same way that we intend that you can expand and connect deeper with Source through these messages and interactions today. So we begin with our thanks and our gratitude to all of you, and we'll continue then with our message. We are your relatives, you could say. We've come from the same origin, and there are many others who are connected to your planet and to ourselves that you may not have seen yet, but are observing your world. You don't necessarily need to believe us, yet if you open your heart, you might experience that presence. We've been to your world in the past. In ancient times, there were open exchanges between beings from other planets and beings from your world. Many things changed, and your world went through periods of greater density. Now you have the choice to wake up, and so many of you are choosing that. We don't want to talk too much about ourselves and all of these cosmic things here and now today, unless you'd like to, then we will, because the core of our message is an understanding that all of you can take with you into your lives to experience your personal ascension or evolution in accelerated ways, which is always directly related to the ascension and evolution of your entire planet. There is a simple way to do that. We, and many others, call this the formula. The formula is to enact or act upon your highest passion, also expressed as joy, excitement, love. Act upon it, yes, to the best of your ability without insisting on any particular outcome. Doing this and this alone is enough for you to ascend. It is enough for you to raise your frequency to a higher attitude and altitude. And as you raise your frequency, your entire life will change. The more you practice this formula, the easier it will be to maintain states of great unconditional love. And unconditional love is the basis of your reality. Source created many universes, and some universes are created differently. This universe, however, is created with the core intention of unconditional love. Therefore, you do not create love, you simply return to love. And the way that you return to love is by listening to your own heart and taking the steps your heart is asking you to take. So again, this formula, enacting your passion means in every single moment that you have the opportunity to choose what you are about to do, instead of operating from the mind, bring yourself into your heart and into your felt sense of what is going to bring your heart to expand the most. Let's get more specific than expand, though. What brings your heart to light up, to tingle with warmth and excitement? What causes your heart to beat a bit faster in a way that feels very pleasant and even pleasurable? If you choose that one pathway that is more exciting than any other, and then do everything that you need to do to make it as clear and smooth as possible, to make it the best pathway you possibly can, and then totally let go of what you expect to happen and open to 
whatever magic arises. If you do this consistently, you will find that love permeates your being. Not only does love permeate your being, it will ripple out through you. The more individuals in your world choose to do this before they choose to do something else, they will experience an increase in love, in connection, in flow, and they will find that so many of the old limiting stories or negative beliefs that prevented them from feeling love simply vanish. Well, some of them will simply vanish and others will have to be worked out. And this is what the second two parts of that formula point to, to enact your excitement to the best of your ability without insisting on an outcome. So when we say the best of your ability, we also mean that you have to look very clearly at what stories you're telling yourself about what you can and cannot do and question those stories. Bring yourself to question every single self-doubting narrative that arises or even narratives that suggest others will not like it if I do this. Others will be upset with me if I do this. This is a big story for many of you to let go of. And that's why the insistence on the outcome also has to be let go of. So many of you don't do what is exciting for you because a part of you knows that other energies you might be attached to in your life will disappear once you choose what you're really passionate about. And you have to recognize that if something doesn't resonate with your passion, it's actually not meant for you ultimately. It may have served you up into a point, though if that person, place, or situation is not compatible with the ac activity or the place or the community that makes you feel as joyful, and loving as possible, then the best thing to do is to let go. As well, this road has many forks and turns in it. And so when we say let go of your insistence on the outcome, we also mean that be open to changing your course at any moment on the journey. The moment that something more exciting shows up for you, choose a different pathway. Knowing that you are to be guided by frequency, not by mental constructs and stories. You are beings of frequency. Frequency brought you here. Whether you were resisting it or not, some sort of energy called to you and invited you to show up to this space. Frequency has brought you to so many different events, meetings, and random occurrences in your life. Nothing is actually very random at all. This energy of excitement is always there for you to direct you to these seeming random meetings. In your heart, this part of you knows if you take this pathway, something very special is going to happen. Some examples of this are, you are walking down the street and all of a sudden you feel called to go into a certain place that you haven't been in a while. You're not necessarily sure why. You had a different destination at first. And all of a sudden there you meet somebody and that conversation plants a seed for you that later leads to your entire lives changing. These events are common and you need to start looking at them as much more extraordinary because they are there to show you this inner feeling of passion, of joy, of something within you tickling your heart 
to make a choice that feels right, but you don't necessarily understand, is a mechanism that can lead you to wondrous and powerful experiences. Many of you are seeking to develop greater this intuitive ability. And for us, we see intuition and love as almost one and the same. It is love that intuitively guides you to do something or to not do something. It is your own self-love that intuitively protects you from situations that are not really in your best interest. It is love that guides you to express your own needs and desires in the highest and clearest way. And that is also a very big, important part of this formula for your personal growth and expansion. It is, yes, to enact, but also to express what you're excited about, to share it, and to do the things that excite you in the most exciting way. So many of you are so conditioned to simply please other people or to blend in with the crowd or with your tribe that you don't actually recognize the way of doing things that calls to your heart the most. Instead of recognizing that you have the ability to adjust the frequency and adjust the set and setting of every event, you simply surrender to what is. And surrender is more of the time a good thing. But when you surrender your own preferences and desires and don't give space for what your heart is calling you to, it's like you leave out some of the key ingredients in the recipe. And while the recipe might still taste good with all of the other ingredients, if you don't throw in those tiny little special spices in the end, you don't get that full richness and depth. So enacting your passion means as well, paying attention to all of those subtle cues within you that are asking you to do things in more specific and thorough ways. You find God in everything, because God is in everything. The one source is in all of manifested creation. And you deepen into that by recognizing that you are that God, that source, helping that source experience self-awareness. Because without you, source would not have tongues and eyes and hands. Source would not have sight, sound, sensation. You are giving all of those gifts to God. And you are giving all of those gifts of physicality to the other realms. We see you as equals. And we see it as funny when you humans agree that some other humans are superior than the other humans. It isn't really that way. All is one and the one is an all. And in your physical reality, you give the higher dimensions of experience great ability to appreciate all that is through your very existence and the things that you do. So enjoy the plane that you exist in and know that it is interconnected with so many other subtle realms of experience. All around you are invisible worlds that you can explore. And you'll deepen into those worlds the most by making sure that you are aligned in love in your own lives. Once you're there, you can open up to speak with beings like ourselves or beings like fairies, elves, and all of those invisible ones. You can open up to the realm of your own ancestors, and you can open up to the realm of Yes, even extraterrestrials, for we are on the verge of making ourselves more known to you. And this 
formula, again, of raising your frequency is directly tied into us getting to know you. Because it is by enacting your love that you raise your frequency. And by raising your frequency into love, you release fear. And once your planet as a whole has released enough fear, then we can meet you. Right now, there's still too much fear. And if we were to show up in our ships and land in the field next to you, for example, many of you would still be at a place where you would panic a bit. And we don't want to disturb you. So we are, in a sense, waiting for you. Patiently, no rush. All right? Though, allow yourself to let love carry you into these higher levels so that these wondrous meetings can take place. We do thank you for allowing us to share this message with you at this moment of your time. We hope you enjoy it and it rests into your fields in beautiful ways. And now in return, we would like to support you with whatever questions that you have to share. We will do our best to reflect to you the truth of your own higher self so that you can integrate it in your minds and in your lives and all of the ways that serve you. You can begin with any of your questions whenever you would like. Are there any particular reflections on this island of Iceland when you came to this tiny little machine? Well, yes, as you know, it is a new land, so it has a newer energy. The volcanic activity here creates an immense power that so many of you can feel from the earth beneath you. As a land on the center of two tectonic plates, you are also bridging worlds. You may find here that many of the energies from the American world and from Europe and Far East as well converge here. You assimilate these energies very well and you can experience a deepening into that. This land is a place of a certain energy of a new Eden, you could say. You have a leading edge in terms of the consciousness evolution, whether you all recognize it or not. So be appreciative of this and appreciate how energies can converge here. There are, as many of you know, many different vortexes here. And these portals are open for you to connect with the other worlds with greater ease than in places that have been subject to greater environmental destruction. So appreciate this if it is your home. And if it is not your home, yes, appreciate it as a place to recharge your battery. For the vibration here is palpable and strong. And yes, one final comment. You will find a continuing trend of certain people coming here to get the download, so to speak, that they will carry with them to other places. Thank you. Oh, well, thanks to you, yes. Um, yes. Uh, so I had an encounter a few years ago with uh, extra dimensional entities. Yes. Um, were you able to glean uh, what kind of energy it was? Can you describe the quality of energy or the appearance that presented to you? No appearance. Um, the quality was just a, a feeling of tremendous bliss and peace, but I'm not quite sure if that was the energy signature of the entity or if it was just a state that it put me in. And it proceeded to interfere um, with my energy body. Interfere in what way? Yeah, so so I'm kind of hoping that you would be able to 
cover that. All right. If a being is interfering, then they might not have the clearest intent. We sense this being was attempting to harness some of the energy that was coming through your own natural connection to source. The bliss you were experiencing was that opening to source. And sometimes if you open to that high frequency energy without proper grounding, other beings can be attracted to that light and wish to take some of it for themselves. It happens sometimes. So our only guidance in this case is to, when you find yourself opening up, set a clear boundary that you are only welcoming beings that are of service to others and are of the light themselves. Um, one more question. Yes. Uh, are you familiar with a Kanuku term um, for a false attention matrix? This idea is sort of a metaphor pointing to the ascension of the ego versus the ascension of the soul. What we would say is that there are some individuals on your planet who use higher frequency energies and then bring them into the level of their personality. You can recognize these beings because they speak only about themselves. They might say things like, I am an Arcturian master reincarnated, for example. They might say things like, I have a clearer connection to source than others, or they might say things that lead others to assume that something of this nature might be true. The false ascension matrix, in this sense, is the human ego becoming very spiritualized and creating a division between self and those who are of a lower vibration. Whereas when the soul ascends, the soul recognizes that the one spirit is within all. And so a soul who ascends on a true path humbles themselves as they raise into those higher frequencies. And there is no false or over-exaggerated sense of self. Sometimes people who are on that sort of a false path will feel very concealed. You might not see it clearly right away, but you can usually feel or sense that they are using the work they are doing to uphold their ego or their sense of self in a way that isn't really helpful. I have one question. Thank you. Yes. Well, thanks uh, to you. And yes, you can address your question. What is the best, how is the best thing for us to live on a, to follow our highest timeline? That would be the formula that we mentioned in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. It is attuning to your heart in such a deep way that you pay attention to your heart's impulses and subtle cues in the moment they arise. So when your heart calls you to something, that is like a timeline opening up. Your heart is aware of all of these shifting forks in your road or timelines that emerge. So when you're very deeply attuned to your heart and you feel that you must do something, don't stop that with your mind. Allow yourself to just get on the train and trust where it's going. I still have a question. Yes. Are all human beings meant to learn the same lesson? No. Or are we here to learn individual lessons? Every soul has different lessons. Some souls incarnate with lessons that it will take another soul 70 years of their life to learn. Yet that being might have incarnated with the lessons that that other person will take a long time to learn themselves. Every soul is different in this way. And when you learn your lessons, you are also learning them for others. 
So don't take for granted that other people around you are having challenging experiences and when they are brave enough and generous enough to share what experience they had, it allows you to integrate that lesson. So also recognize that the challenging experiences you have might have been cumbersome, yet are gifts for others when you are courageous enough to share what you've learned from them. You are all helping each other learn lessons quicker. But the one lesson, we will say this, the one lesson that all souls have to learn is unconditional love, because unconditional love, again, is the core foundation of this reality. It is not so much a lesson as much as it is the core that all are deepening into in their own way. And the lessons would be the obstacles to surrendering to that unconditional love. Can I ask you a question? Yes. What would be the most important thing we do for our children and ourselves today? Encourage them to follow the formula. Encourage them to enact their own passion, to do what they really love to do more than anything else. If you can implement some forms of education that are not based on a mechanical way that they have to learn this subject and that subject, but in, is instead based upon them choosing to learn what they are really inclined to learn through their joy and passion, that will help them become much more courageous and self determining in finding their own pathway and finding pathways that give back to the world in much clearer ways. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, before you were born, you gave that your religion out. Do we plan it before our souls plan? Yes. You choose the parents in birth circumstances. You have some sense of the future probabilities. You are not necessarily choosing the exact timeline because timelines are always fluctuating, but you get a general sense of the incarnational circumstances. And from then on, you make choices at a human level. Well, your soul chose this life incarnation, but at this point now you are choosing at a human level what path you take. We can say that there are thousands, if not millions of paths before you potentially. So it is up to you to choose which one you take. Yes, and again, remember the core of this message is by tuning into the love frequency and letting that guide you, you will naturally find the best path for you. It is determined by what you love more than anything else. No, you don't have to. In fact, it's better if you don't. <laughs> because seriousness is a manifestation of being attached to outcomes. And being attached to outcomes narrows your focus. It tightens and constricts your energy. When you are attached to outcomes, it's like putting blinders on, as if you're a horse that can only see directly in front. Yet, you're not a horse. And you are on a path that forks a lot. So if you only have that single-minded focus on the one thing you set out for, you don't see the forks on the road that can take you there faster, that can take you down a more scenic and much more beautiful route, that help you avoid the pitfalls on the way, and can help you connect with the souls that are most resonant for you. So you have to have more lightness about everything you do. You have to be 
open to whatever happens totally failing because when you're open to it you are able to integrate your lessons faster and you are able to enjoy whatever happens much more you humans take your lives far too seriously actually and if you open up into playfulness you will find that so many blockages dissolve in you and in others around you and you are able to relax into love because love cannot be forced you cannot seriously work your way into love has anybody worked their way into love you can surrender into love you can yes work and develop a life that you love very much but that work is not going to help you enjoy the life that you have created you may see many people who have created empires but fail to be able to enjoy and appreciate what they have but if you appreciate what you have from now you can go and build whatever your dream is knowing and savoring everything you experience in that process you will be much happier than those who build empires can i ask one question yes what do you um look at the cards i mean do you, do you are you born with this feeling i mean where you're born is, is this already a feeling in you and who can yes you? and no there are certain levels of instinctual fear you can see them in a pup, young puppy or kitten or baby these animals or even humans use fear to help get their needs met that's natural for you babies cry you fear not getting your needs met and so you act out that level of it is natural however someone who is nurtured and cared for properly will grow beyond those fears the fears that are unnatural are the learned fears and these are the fears of failure the fears of rejection the fears of not being loved when society school family bring children to feel as if if they don't do something right they will not be loved and accepted fear goes much deeper into the system so all of these little ways that family reject constrain and restrict create negative belief systems that many people carry with them for the rest of their lives the path of transformation is to become aware of these beliefs and to recognize them as living energy fields and storytellers within you that lie to you and make you see do the world around you differently and see your hopes and desires as invalid once you start to wake up and recognize that these living energy fields and storytellers within you are there and they are not actually necessary or true or valid you can start to rewrite them by telling yourself new stories and using your focus to bring more awareness into the new positive stories long enough that you see the old negative stories as totally absurd and ridiculous as you do this then the negative beliefs leave you and so does the fear yes so more clarity on this is in order to get in touch with the negative beliefs you have to feel them you have to allow yourself to be present with the negative emotion healing is feeling so by allowing yourself to feel them you begin a process that some of you call catharsis crying shaking moving your body or sweating are all powerful ways that the fear based energies leave you as these energies move from your body your sweat or your tears carry out chemical compounds that are the crystallization of negative emotion and negative belief so 
in order to move through this. Allow yourself to feel so deeply. What have the, these stories been creating for you in your body? Let go of resistance to feeling. And at the same time, hold yourself in love. The love is what will push these things out of you. Call upon your higher self to send those waves of higher frequency energy into your body, into the places where this energy is stuck. With compassion, you can break through whatever you might be holding. Yes. Um, why? Why don't you want an alternative story? Well, this is similar to what you might know as a detox effect in the body. When somebody has something like a parasite or a sort of sickness, and they take healing herbs and healing foods and clean water, it does detox them, but that parasite or that toxin gets bigger. It gets more intense. They feel the symptoms that they've been living with get worse as that parasite or whatever it is dies and flushes from their system. And your planet is experiencing this now. It happens in waves and cycles. You can notice that in terms of energy, you move very far towards the frequency of love and then all of a sudden something happens that pulls you back in the direction of fear. But then you move even more forwards in the direction of love again. This is happening on your planet. And now you're in a pullback. You've received much new energy. And you can note that even while politically in the mainstream, there are worse things happening than before. You can also notice in your communities, in your lives, in the spiritual and alternative circles, there is a greater cohesiveness. There is a greater coming together of those who resonate with each other and each other's ideas. There is an influx of light. And that influx of light causes those who still have those fear-based energies, which are essentially parasites in their system, to react more powerfully to the fear that they are holding. This simply asks for you, who knows better, to deepen into the love, to get louder with your voice, so that it is not simply those who are in fear shouting and screaming, but there is an equally loud cry of love. Yes, our thanks to you. Yes. <clears throat> um, sometime a person is on a path of going through something and they ask for help and I'm wondering sometime helping them might take away their opportunity to have an experience. So I prefer not to help people too much. At least I'm wary of that taking yeah, taking away the opportunity to go through it themselves. So there's a question. 
when is the right time to help and when is the time, right time not to help? Well, it's a matter of if the person is asking for help with things that they can do on their own or not. And it's important to recognize that you cannot do everything that you need for yourself and to know the difference. For example, there's a part of your own back that you cannot massage. And even if you stretch and do yoga every day, that part of your back still might hurt. So for you to ask somebody else to help you massage that back, or better do an exchange with them so that you support each other, is a marvelous way for all that is to expand and to reflect and for every part of all that is to receive the energy it needs. However, if somebody is asking you to cook for them all the time and they refuse to learn how to cook, then yes, that would be interfering in their process. That would be preventing them from learning the lesson that they need to learn. All of you need relationship. You need to feel connected with someone or something. And to recognize that need within you and in others helps you in tending to your own heart and opening your heart. If what someone is asking you for doesn't feel like something you have to give or want to give, tune in and feel if that is coming from a place of fear or greed. And if there could be a subtle opening of love to give, and if love is instead directing you to focus on yourself, listen. But if love invites you to give, then give. Sometimes individuals want attention, but they refuse to change. And these are the instances in which it is most important to withdraw in order to really support them. Yes, acknowledge they need love and connection. But if they are continuing to ask you to do something for them that could be done easier if they changed their beliefs and changed themselves, then point that out to them and invite them to do that work and say that you would help them in doing that work, but you cannot do the thing that they're asking you to do. That would be the simplest yet still nuanced answer to that question. Does that help you? Yes. Oh, I think you, yes. All right, yes. One more question, then. Yeah, I want to ask you if, if you feel that about this topic, uh, the connection between ayahuasca and alcoholics. Well, ayahuasca is a spirit that is very much aligned with clearing, and the Arcturians are known as psychic surgeons. Therefore, there's a similarity in their frequency. Ayahuasca works very well to support the clearing of old energy patterns and stuck and stagnant energies. So those who go into that space and they ask for higher guidance in clearing out will often receive the support from Arcturian, sometimes without even knowing it. The different guides and guardians that come through have different purposes. The Arcturian energy is much about energy healing and clearing. The Syrian frequency has much more to do with artistic expression, sound, and the experience of transcendental consciousness. The Palladian connection has much more to do with unconditional love and relational questions and concerns. So depending on what energy one needs the most will determine who shows up for them if they aren't specific with their invitation. And of course, there are many other beings beyond that, though we mentioned these as the main three that support you in those sorts of spaces. All right. Yes, I think you as well. So we invite all of you now to make yourselves very comfortable 
If you have the ability to lay down, do so. If you simply would like to relax against the wall, you can do so. We will offer a, another brief meditation before the channel begins the sound healing process. Picture yourself in a beautiful place in nature, like a jungle, with lush green plants all around you, birds buzzing, bugs all around. You see beneath you an opening, and you walk to a cliff, a circular cliff, yes, and at the bottom there is a beautiful, beautiful lake. Along the sides of the cliff there is a brilliant spiral staircase that goes all the way around the cliff. Walk slowly down the staircase, each step taking you deeper into a relaxed and open state. Follow the stairs until you get to the edges of this little pond. And if you'd like, you can take a step in. As you swim around, you see, above you, a brilliant light that flashes. A ship that is shaped saucer-like descends into that same crevice in the earth and hovers above you, shining brilliant light. They drop a ladder down to you, and a smiling face looks out from the ship, inviting if you, if you would like, to take a step inside. You can choose to swim around here in the waters as the sound washes over you, or you can choose to walk into the ship and let these beings guide you. The sound will take you deeper and your imagination will fill in the gaps. As now the space is open for you to receive a transmission of energy from whatever guides are presenting themselves to you here and now today. Enjoy this energy, allow it to support you in releasing whatever is in your own way, surrendering to the unconditional love that you are. 